Jeremy, appreciate you joining us today. Uh, Japan intervening first time in 24 months since the aftermath of the Asian, fi Asian financial crisis. Could we see another one? Well, you know, it wouldn't surprise you to keep seeing more of those headlines. You know, they, they tried to stem the tide of all the flows going against the yen. But in reality, you know, they didn't change much. They, they put in some volatility that the yen might appreciate on days they intervened, but they left their monetary policy unchanged. The tenure in the U.S. is rising. You know, the forces driving the yen weaker has been this rising differential of the Fed being one of the most aggressive central banks raising rates, the Bank of Japan still controlling interest rates. So the, the, I see the, the fundamental forces still being yen weak. Um, I, I think they're going to have to continue to intervene. I don't think that's going to change until they change their policy. We'd still say you should be hedged when you go to Japan. You shouldn't be betting on the yen. I think it's going to be a very tough environment for the BOJ. There was a great op-ed in the Financial Times this morning that is titled Global Backlash is Brewing Against the Fed. What's the most extreme scenario we could potentially see if the dollar continues to rise? Could we see sort of a coordinated action taken by these emerging economies to defend themselves from a stronger dollar? You know, I, I think they're going to wait to see the end of the cycle. I think we're closer to the end than they are, we are the beginning. Now, and of course, that means inflation actually has to come down and they have to start seeing it come down. Uh, but I think even that's Japan's policy is that they feel like they can't do enough to stem the tide on the central bank policy. So they're just waiting six months to see sort of the, the, the last few hikes from the Fed and then they might change their policy. It'll, you know, co coincide with Corota leaves uh, as, as sort of a new governor. Um, but I think it's tough because the Fed is raising rates aggressively. And, and now you're seeing some of the other central banks like the ECB mm -hmm. trying to play catch up. But Japan is the outlier. I think for global investors, you want to go where their policy is still easing. Japan is that. China is that. The ones that are tightening aggressively is, is a tougher environment. So you're recommending Japan and China. Uh, what, what's the thesis on emerging markets right now? Does it have to get worse before it, it gets better, before you know, we see valuations come down to a point where investors like yourself say now is the time to get in? Well, I think the EM central banks were the early tighteners. Uh, you know, you, you see Brazil as an example of a place that's commodity rich. They, they were hiking more aggressively earlier. Uh, and so they're not, you know, having to do the relative tightness today. Uh, you know, so I think to some extent it's the, the COVID zero in China has been a tough policy, um, and that has ripple effects across all of the emerging markets. Uh, but so if, if China can improve its economy next year po post this, uh, you know, the, 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 the Communist Party thing in a, a month from today, that could be a, a useful catalyst for broader emerging markets. Uh, but I do think the, the, the EM central banks tightened more aggressively. They took their, their pain earlier, uh, and that's, you know, setting the stage for a potential rebound next year. If I want to invest in emerging markets, but I don't want to invest in China, can I do that by a, via you know, a fund or an ETF? Yeah, we launched one today, XC, um, which is Emerging Markets X State Owned X China. We have been doing a lot of value and dividend strategies going back 15 years ago. We've seen a lot of interest in those strategies actually this year. They've been inflows into those funds, mm -hmm. but we, we see X China as a way you know, if you go back 20 years ago, China was only five, six percent of broad indexes. It got up to 40 percent, which is really a, a big allocation. We think people want to control their allocations to China. Uh, a fund like XC can give you dedicated exposure to China, control how much you want. And we do it with an ex state owned approach. We think those companies have, have good governance, less running in the interest of the state. Uh, and so XC is a brand new fund piggybacking the, the, the full family of now China state owned, broad EMX state owned. India, they don't, and now ex-China. 